This is what I often hear. They just don't understand. And so because they don't understand what God is doing in me, I'm stuck. I can't move any further. That's a lie. That's a lie. You can pretend that all you want, that the community you're in is holding you back. But if it's the community God has called you to, then that's a lie. Right? You, you can lie to yourself and the people around you that, well, I've got this commitment, so this commitment is keeping me from doing what I really want to do. No, no, no. If this is the commitment God has called you to, whether it's taking care of your elderly parents, whether it's uh, giving your income to this one thing, if this is what God has called you to, then it's only going to lead you to where you're supposed to be, but you've got to be weak in the midst of it. You've got to stop trying to take care of yourself. We don't have the luxury, all of us, to get struck blind like Paul did. <laughs> Some of us just have to realize that we've been spiritually blind, that we've made ourselves so prideful and arrogant that we can't see God anymore. That, that we can't actually know what he's trying to do in our lives, that we can't actually be yielded and submitted to his leadership because we've made ourselves God. And God says, no, 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 no. You're not moving forward until you embrace what I've put around you to grow in my will. You've got to sacrifice your will before me. You've got to sacrifice your will before me. You've got to, you've got to learn to love people. You've got to learn to lay your life down before people. You've got to learn to walk in humility. You've got to learn to walk in weakness. Paul said, I celebrate my weakness because it's in these places that I'm made weak that God can finally be magnified through my life. <laughs> God's given you gifts. I, I recognize that, and you're good at the gifts God has given you, but the places he shows up the strongest is the places where you don't have control. <laughs> the places where he does the most damage against the, the, the evil one is the places where you're completely surrendered, where your will is not leading your life. As we learn to walk with Christ, whether we're walking in a, a formal ministry setting, whether we're going to like, uh, you know, working at a bank, being a teacher, being a, a real estate agent, they got two good ones in the front, a couple somewhere else. As we do these things, we have to understand that God didn't call us to these places because he thinks that we've got better skills than the other people who are available. He called us because that's his call for our life. He called us because that's the commitment he wants to use to refine us. And the more we try to, to, to make these calls about what we can do, the more we're actually trying to subject these calls to our will instead of saying, God, I really don't know what I'm doing. I really am kind of scared sometimes. I really think this about myself. But then allowing his love, allowing his grace to say, no, 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 this is where I've called you. Be confident. I, prayed a, I paid a great price because there's a great cost and you're worth what I paid. Now walk in confidence and don't worry about where somebody else is walking. Don't worry about where, you're, where you feel insufficient. Don't worry about where you're not in control. Just keep walking with me. Continue in your commitment. Continue with the family I've put you in. Continue being who you are where I placed you to be. See, a spiritual orphan has to move from place to place to place. Because each place is just another chance to siphon validation about what they're insecure about. Okay? A spiritual orphan has to bounce from place to place to place to place because each stop is an opportunity to siphon validation about the things they're insecure about. And so the moment confrontation happens, an orphan has to find a new place because the validation stopped. Is that too much? Do you guys understand that? Yeah. That you're, if you're bouncing place to place, it's because you need people not to know you and only see what you're good at. You need people not to see who you actually are, and you need to be able to present a false version of who you want to be seen as so that you can glean validation against the things that scare you about who you are. 
<laughs> See, a son and a, and a daughter, sons and daughters, can commit. Because they know it's not really about what they can do. It's not really about what they have to offer. It's not really about what they think about themselves. They know that there's a father in heaven who paid the highest price that says, no, no, you don't, may not feel this way about yourself, but you're worth it. You have value beyond what you see. And if you would just continue where I've called you, I'll do things in your life that you could never do for yourself. If you just continue in the commitment I laid before you with the people I've put you in, then you'll see me do things in your life that you never could produce on your own. And so we have to make a choice. First, we have to know who we are, what we're called to, where we're called to commit, and then we have to put our heads down and believe that God says what he says about us.